Club. Hello, this is uh, Bill, and thank you for joining me. Today I want to uh, present something rather than me uh, playing a match. And as you can see from the uh, PowerPoint here, what I'm going to be talking about is late game bear offs, and in particular um, about how to estimate wins when you have three men to bear off in um, two rolls. And um, I'll go into more detail in a moment. But there's a uh, chart from Danny Kleiman which estimates your winning chances to get off in two rolls with three men. And um, I came up with a formula to try to approximate that. And then um, Frank Talbot uh, posted recently on BG Online regarding um, how to estimate your winning chances in situations like this, which inspired me to come up with this in the first place. So here, I saw this post a couple weeks ago on the uh, backgammon forums. And this position on the left here was posted by Neil Kazaros from a recent tournament. Um, he has it posted uh, with some match score implica implications because Blue is trailing 4-0 um, to zero on an 11-point match. But here, I'm just going to think of it in terms of uh, a money game. So it's in, uh, several people responded, but the post from Frank is what piqued my interest. And on the right, he writes that if uh, blue is uh, redoubling, then from white's point of view, white wins the game about 15% of time on the next roll. And um, the way you come up with that, looking at the math, this gets a little complicated, but if you take a cross section of uh, uh, cross-section of, of rolls, which is 36, six on one die, six on the other, and then if you do a two-ply analysis, you're looking at 36 squared, or 1296. So from White's point of view, you can say White gets to roll four times, or 30, uh, unless, blue, unless blue gets off in one turn, which is double fours or better, then White gets a turn. So 36 minus four is 32, so 32 times White gets to roll, um, and on those, he rolls doubles, double ones, um, or better, six times. So, so that the 32 times 6 is 192 out of the 1296 possible um, two-ply variations, or about 15% of the time. And then you can also look, and um, Frank mentioned that Danny Kleiman had this chart that says these are all the for the number of uh, pips with the three men, how, how often do you get off in two rolls? And in this case, um, Blue has an 11 pip position. And according to Frank, he did a little math there and say, well, Blue gets off in that 11 roll position about 80% of the time, which means 20% of the time he doesn't. So Frank figures, from White's point of view, if he rolls a double on his roll, he wins 15% of the games there. He also wins about 20% of the time if Blue doesn't get off in two rolls. Uh, but there's a little bit of dis there's a little bit of uh, double counting in there because uh, you're saying some of the times when you win in two rolls, you also win in run roll. So you subtract those out. He takes off 3% of that. At any rate, he comes up with this. 33% winning chances, and it turns out that was right on the money um, for the posting, and I found that pretty interesting. In a second post, Frank went on to say that going back to this climbing chart, if you memorize four points on the chart, you can estimate uh, how often these three checkers get off in two rolls pretty easy, and Frank posted these numbers here. So that's, what's got, that's what got me looking at this. Um, it just so happens I did take a uh, backgammon lesson from Frank maybe 10 years ago. It was only one lesson. I'd have been happy to continue, but uh, uh, he was just interested in the one lesson, so that's all we took. But he happened to mention this in the lesson that he gave me. He, he let me photocopy a few key things, and one of the things I copied was this chart that he mentions from Kleiman, and I've, I've refashioned it here, and... I did kind of an analysis and said, for example, the 11 pip position, if we go back, 
the one we looked at had one man on the five and two men on the three and that corresponds on here to uh, this chart here this position here and according to Danny Kleiman that's 78 percent chance to get off in two rolls from there but there's different variations there's actually six different configurations where the pips can add up to 11 and I studied this for a little while and I noticed that if you take the best case scenario where the uh, where the winds are the most you can approximate pretty well this chart by starting with 15 pips is 50 percent and then you go up or down in steps of eight and a half and that gets you pretty close at least to the best distribution number so you can see for example um, that's what the that's what this is here so uh, this column here is the number of pips for the three men to bear off and then with the best distribution your winning chances and that's going to correspond to the Kleinman chart here and then if you take this is what I use to, to try to remember it. All you have to remember is that 15 pips is 50%, and then you go up or down in steps of eight and a half from there. So this is the formula approximation. This is what it really is. And it's pretty close. Uh, it's a little bit off for 16 pips, but other than that, I, good enough for my money anyway. Um, if you notice, a, uh, going back to this page here with these different configurations there's actually a decent amount of variance the best the best distribution with the 11 pips is 84 percent but the worst distribution is 75 and that's one thing I noticed on here um, it looks uh, basically if you have the worst distribution it's almost like you have one pip worse so for example the worst distribution with 11 pips is two men on the ace, one man on the five, that's 75% winning chances, which is about the same as the best position with 12 pips. Um, and looking a little further, you can see that the best distributions are the ones where your checkers are flat, meaning there's no men only on one point, and where the checkers are close together, you don't have gaps. Um, so if you're gonna try to make adjustments to this, if your checkers are stacked, that tends to be the worst, or if they're stacked and gapped, that's bad. So all this is preliminary stuff to get you to some uh, examples. So this is the first problem, the one that was mentioned, um, posted by Neil Kaz, and so on. Now this is just a walkthrough of how I think you could try to use this. Uh, oh, let me go back. Um, so the, import, the important thing down here then, you use this chart to estimate your winning chances in two rolls. And then if you're going to add, if you're going to get your overall winning chances, you want to say, if you want to figure out how often do I win in two rolls, how often do I win in one roll, and then you got to take away the double counting. So let's see, I got I put some examples so we can check that in action. Once again, this is the post from uh, Neil Kazaraz. And here we're looking from White's point of view. So from White's point of view, as we said before, he gets off. Um, you win in two rolls if red doesn't get off. And 15 pips is 50%. And if you go down, if you go up in uh, steps of eight and a half, four times, that takes you to 84 percent that's what the best distribution here it's slightly stacked and um, if you in, interpolate and say it's about 80 percent which is actually what Frank said um, so you're going to get 20 percent wins from white's point of view when red doesn't get off and then you also win if you throw a double on the first time and we already went through how you have 32 out of 36 times you get to roll as white and six of those times you roll a double so you win about 15% of the games there. But then you got to take away, um, you don't get that, you don't get that second roll win if you win on the first roll. And I think this is what, they think this is how it's working, is you take, 
you just multiply those two numbers together. So 15% times 20% is about 3%. And then netting that out, you get 20 plus 15 minus 3 is about 32%. And that's pretty close to the actual computer evaluation, which is 33. Um, and what that would mean would be a, it would be a, a double and a take. And uh, Neil's position was tougher because there were some match equity concerns where you're, you don't have a normal take point. Uh, but from a money point of view, you have an easy take here. Here's another problem. This is from Red's point of view. And, um, or at least I'm trying to think of what would be a good application for this. So here, white is doubling, and he's often at least in three rolls at most. So the real question is, how often is red do you get off in two rolls? And uh, looking at the chart, if you recall, the key memory marker is 15 pips is 50%. So 16 pips means you get off, um, take eight and a half down, or about 42% of the time, or maybe 40% for easy math. So that means, as, as red, if I get to roll twice, if I get two rolls, I'll be off about 42% of the time. Well, how often does that happen? That happens if white doesn't roll a double on his turn, which would be five-sixths of the time he doesn't roll a double on the first roll times the five-sixths of the time he doesn't roll a double on the second roll. That comes out to be, be about 70%, five-six times five-six. So if you could get that far, then you could, you could estimate your winning chances as being 40% that you're off in two rolls times the 70% of the time that you actually get two rolls, or about 20%, 28%, and that's fairly close to the actual year, which is 29. Um, so just another example of, of how I think this could be useful um, at the table. Here's another one. Now we're looking, I guess we're looking from, uh, I might have wrote that wrong. Yeah, we're looking from Red's point of view, and this time it's the reverse. So from Red, if White's doubling, and from Red's point of view, we win as long as White doesn't get off in two rolls. Well, how often does that happen? Well, 12 pips is going to be 50% but it's three steps up. So white wins about 75% of the time he gets off in two rolls, which means 25% of the time he doesn't. So I'm starting with 25% winning chances. And uh, if this was a money game, that's actually all you really need to know. That's, that's enough for a take on its own. But just to finish the analysis, then you also win if you roll, if red rolls a, a double on his turn, then he'll win in one roll. And that, that math is almost the same as the, the math that we've done on the other problems. So here, um, if white rolls double fours or better, he gets off. So 33 times he doesn't, times the six you roll a do double. Again, it's about 15%. Um, then you take off the double counting. So if you do 25% times 15%, that's going to be roughly 4%. So now you add then you add, this is the, the tablet method, I think that's what he's doing. You take the 25%, you win with the two rolls, plus the 14 on the first roll, minus the four for the double counting, you come up with about 36%. And once again, that's fairly close to the actual, which is 35. But for extra credit, I'm not sure how to factor this in, but I noticed that if white rolls really small, five pips or less, then red is actually uh, a favorite and would have a, a recube. I won't get into that, um, but that's probably going to add a tiny bit of equity to this position. I admit I'm not sure how to calculate that. One last example where I think this method could be useful. Here we're looking at a three checker versus three checker position, and it's from red's point of view. So white is ahead one pip, and it's doubling. And the question is, what would you do as red? And I think you can use the same basic method. So from red's point of view, I win in two rolls. If, if white doesn't get off in two, but as red, I do get off in two. 
So I think I can use these percentages to estimate that. So once again, going to the chart, 15, 15 pips is 50%. Go a step down. So with from White's point of view, with 14 pips, he's not going to get off roughly 40% of the time. And then, and then uh, as red, I get off about 50% of the time with 15 pips. You multiply those together, you get about 20% winning chances in that two roll variation. Um, then there's also the chance that from red that I can win in one roll. And this is the same calculation as before, but it's not as favorable. So you get um, about 7.5% winning chances on that first roll. Then you take out the double counting, which would be 20% of 7.5 or about 1.5. So you get 20 plus 7.5 minus 1.5 equals about 26%. Um, according to the computer, the real number is 24, and it's a bear take. So I'm not sure. Um, it could be, you know, this is just an estimate kind of thing. But it looks like for a ballpark, it's getting you pretty good and would get you um, to the right answer. And then um, once again, the there may be a tiny amount of variations where let's say white doesn't get off in three rolls then you would have some recubes but uh, that's probably so tiny as to not actually be worth anything so that, that's it for the examples i have let me go back and recap what i'm saying here um, so if you're going to look at um, a position like this the key is going to be to remember the approximate to approximate how often you get off in two rolls with three checkers, you want to remember 15 pips is 50%. Then go up or down in steps of eight and a half to get to um, an estimate for the number. Um, you might have to make an adjustment if the di distribution is bad. Uh, this the chart here is representing the perfect distribution, the the best distribution, meaning that the checkers are unstacked and close together. If the checkers are stacked or far apart, the actual percentage could be less. And then when it comes time to doing the estimating, you want to take how often do I win in two rolls, add to that how often do I win in one roll, and then subtract out the double counting, and that would be an estimate for your overall winning chances. Um, and that's all I have for today. Thank you for listening.